so we're here today in our new Otto Hub in Wembley. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty nice, I've got to say. It looks uh, incredible. Yeah. On point, on brand, I'm loving it. You know what I think my favourite thing is? Go for this it. couch. It's just so comfortable. Yeah, too, too comfortable, if anything. I think we're going to be here for a few hours more. <laughs> yeah, I can't move. Why are we here today? To plug one of our hubs. Not precisely, although I see the angle you're going for. Well, no, we're actually here to talk about uh, air pollution in the capital. Right. So game faces on. Yeah. Very serious, serious topic. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, how bad do you think it is? Well, you know, you're, you're seeing a lot of things about it now. Um, mm -hmm. It's in the newspapers. Uh, the mayor's obviously been talking about it for around a year now. The government brings it up every week. It's got to be bad, hasn't it? It is pretty bad. Um, but just to give you some idea of kind of how road transport and the industry we're in plays a part, we're looking at 5.8 million journeys per car wow. each day in the capital, okay. uh, which means that just in terms of road traffic in London, it makes it one of the most polluting places in the UK. Wow, uh, that's not a small number. It's not a small number at all. And if we're going to get more technical and serious, uh, sadly, uh, long-term exposure to air pollution is killing 9,500 Londoners every year. Uh, whilst pupils at over 800 schools in the capital are being exposed to levels of nitrogen dioxide in breach of EU regulations. So the situation is very dire. It's quite a, a sad story. To be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, this is the discussion we're going to have today. See what where the private hire industry fits in and PCO drivers and see what can, what can be done about it. Well, I mean, uh, where, where is uh, PCO driving and, and just road transport in general fitting into all uh -huh, of this? That's a good question. Well, we actually went out ourselves to a few places around London okay. uh, to get an idea of what kind of okay. pollution levels. I wasn't invited? No, you wasn't. Neither was I, actually. It was our cameraman, Tom, okay. actually went out to film <laughs> some of it. Um, so I'm actually, actually going to ask you on sp some specific places in the capital, how bad do you think it is? And we're looking at the amount of micrograms of nitrogen dioxide per cubic metre. Just okay. to give you a reference, yeah. the government kind of prediction and target uh, for air pollution is 40. So 40 is the kind of ambitious aim to cut it down to. Okay, what, what, are, what is nitrogen dioxide? Uh, Just to take it back. Glad you asked. Yeah, nitrogen dioxide is one of the most harmful polluting gases, uh, irritating the lungs and potentially causing breathing difficulties. So it's, you know, and road traffic is the leading source of this. So okay. all in all, it's something you, know, you want to get reduced. Okay. So uh, if we started to look at some places around the capital, yeah. um, I'll, I'll fire away and I'll, let's, you know, there might even be a free cappuccino in it for you as well, if you can get one right. Okay, um, so no caffeine for me? No today. caffeine, no, no. Okay. <laughs> maybe not, let's find out. Uh, Euston Road in Camden. Right, Euston Road, busy road. Um, 40 is what we're looking for. That's the target for London, 40. Yeah. Uh, I'm picking out some very specific ones for well, you. Well, so. I know that we're not doing particularly well, so maybe 60 micrograms? Keep going higher, my friend. 70? 80 micrograms. Mm, no, no, sadly not. We're looking at 92 micrograms wow. of nitrogen dioxide per cubic meter. Okay. So that's the not scene good. we're setting. No, not that's good at all. That's more than double, actually. Yeah. Uh, the Strand, very uh, popular place Strand. and well known by PCO drivers. Yeah, you see a lot of PCO drivers um, in the Strand. Uh, 80 mm, nope. micrograms? Go a bit higher. Higher? Yeah. 85 micrograms? Almost the same as, as the uh, Euston Road one. Wow. So we're looking at uh, 92 micrograms. Oh, that's... Uh, it paints a picture, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, okay. A bit closer to home, we've got Putney High Street in Putney Wandsworth. High Street. I see a lot of PCO drivers at Putney High yeah, Street. Yeah, absolutely. Especially on a Friday and Saturday evening as well. Yeah. A lot of young people um, have to go out. And I don't know, that's one of the drink. busier roads. Maybe around the 90 mark? Mm, no, actually. It's slightly less. It's been in the papers yeah. quite a lot in recent years. It has slightly reduced, but we're actually okay. looking at 76 micrograms. Wow, okay. But it's bad that 76 yeah. feels like yeah. it's good. I know, right? The target is 40. <laughs> yeah, that's still double. And that's still almost. quite a high threshold. Yeah, um, yeah it's not looking good. Okay. Okay, let's move on to Brixton Road in Lambeth. Brixton Road. I think that might be another 80. Close enough, but it's 75. Okay. All right, I'm going to throw one more out there for you. Okay. Uh, this is a place close to our heart in okay. our Otto Hub in Hammersmith, okay. where it all began. Right. So we're looking at Ells Court. Ells Court. Okay, yeah, that is very close to us. 80 micrograms? Ooh. Sadly, you are way off, my friend. Okay. We're actually looking at 129.5 micrograms. Wow. So that is actually the highest. That uh, is an extremely high number. It is indeed. So yeah, I would That's advise... That's almost triple the amount yeah. of the recommended... It is. 
my Total. math serves me right. It's, it is over triple the amount, yeah, okay. absolutely. So that, that really does paint the picture of how bad Paints a really disheartening yeah. picture, actually. Obviously, this is, we've picked out certain locations here, but I wanted to give you some hard-hitting numbers to make yeah. you kind of truly understand how bad the situation is. You don't really want to be around that station for too long. Richard, I'm starting to need some positive stats here. You want some positivity? Yeah, on I, Friday. I need a little bit of positivity okay. after that. I'll give you, I'll give you a hit, <laughs> hit of positivity. Okay. okay, so in terms of ULES, uh, okay. from July to September of last year, 2019, there was actually a 36% decrease in harmful emissions from nitrogen wow. dioxide okay. on the roadside in the ULES zone. Yeah, Stunning. some progress. Yeah. Some, I'd say that's huge, yeah. 36%. There's also now 13,500 fewer polluting cars in central London every day with 77% of vehicles in the zone meeting the ULES emission standards. So drivers have been upgrading their vehicles, they have been moved, switching towards some newer ones and yeah. taking that into account that they might get charged if they don't. Well, you know, I've got to say, look, we, we've seen it in the last year as well, you know, like in the podcast alone, we brought in guests uh, like uh, Uber, Captain, Via Van, mm -hmm. Green Tomato Cars, all operators that, that came in and chatted about ULES and the congestion charge and they, you know, while they all didn't, necessarily agree with the charges in the first place they all agreed with what the general principle was mm -hmm. behind it which was you know cleaning up london's yeah, air absolutely um, well yeah. talking about that you know i mean uber for example want to completely electrify their fleet by yeah. 2025 which is a huge ask yeah. but it's a you know really ambitious project of theirs and you know captain have got their obviously their ev fleet now as well for riders to choose from and i think they're all starting to very quickly follow suit and and be very proactive in the space. And, and I mean, you know, from our end, of yeah. course, we, we've seen the changes as well. I mean, you know, we changed uh, our entire fleet, uh, more or less our entire fleet to, to EV and plugins, you know, in the last year. And, you know, it started as a big change for us as an organization, but, you know, soon one driver came through the door, then it was five, mm. then it was 10, then 50. And now look, it's a whole community of drivers um, that are walking in and, and purchasing mm. these, these zero emission vehicles. And mm. I've got to say, while, while at the beginning it felt like a few individuals, now it feels like those few individuals have become a community. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the great thing is that you know, not, drivers are not just making savings on their running costs, which was for many the kind of main principle about doing it, maybe at the beginning. Mm. Uh, but there's also this you know, double, double uh, benefit of not just saving on the running costs, but also helping the environment and helping everybody else at the same time. Yeah, you know, I, I, and I've got to say, uh, you know, working from Auto Car, not not just saying this, you know, for the cameras or anything. It it, it feels like you're doing some good, Absolutely, you know, yeah. by, by putting out something yeah. on the streets. And you know, you you putting out figures like you did at the beginning about, you know, deaths yes. and and the harm it is to children. I don't think anybody yeah. wants that. No, I mean, I myself, you know, I have asthma. It's yeah. something that affects me on a daily basis. You know, some days are worse than others. And you know, living in London, I can feel it. I can feel it in the air. You know, it's, it's not great, and I want I want to seen improved air quality in the capital, yeah. not just for me, but for everybody. And it has become noticeable, you know, even small things like the buses, you know, changing up to some of the more hybrid yeah, vehicles. And hydrogen as well. We've got some hydrogen and electric. Yeah. You know, they're mixing it up and trying new things. You know, and, and even then the air still does feel, you know, quite polluted, mm. but, you know, progress is there in the numbers. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I, for one, am quite excited to see where that can go. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to lie, um, there were a few troubling and disheartening facts that you threw out there. Yeah, sorry to be the, the bearer of bad news on that one. But I think there were also some quite positive things yeah. that you said Ultra as well. Ultra emission zone, yeah. you led, positive the, changes. The trajectory in London does seem to be on the up, and, and I guess long may it continue. Yeah, everyone's a bit more aware of it as well, that's what's important. Look, hopefully we can come back here in a year's time, sit on this lovely couch, but we'll talk about a serious issue and see the improvements the ultra low emission zone has made and, and the air quality in London in general. And I hope uh, PCO drivers have found this very useful. Yeah, here's to hoping. Absolutely. Absolutely.